Okay, welcome back. The second part of the carbonyl. So as I said, we're going to be looking at the additional elimination mechanism and this is mainly focused on the acid chloride and the anhydrides. So I'll do one first with the acid chloride. You should know how to name these by the way. Effectively, you just look at the amount of carbon, so prop, um, single bond, so propan, and all you do on the end, you just add oil chloride. So like that, not too difficult. Right, now for what's going to happen, again quite similar to before with the, the nucleophilic addition, we've got a big electronegativity difference here between all these. All these guys are pulling the electrons away from the carbon. So poor little thing again, electron deficient, delta positive there. So what's going to happen? Well, we've got this coming along, lone pairs. Again, it's going to attack that carbon. Your double bond will break because carbon can only have four bonds, so obviously it can't have five with this. So attack on there, that will break off. Now the one bit I'm expecting people to make mistakes on is they will forget their positive charge there on the oxygen. You can Charge should never change from one side of the reaction to the other. So you'll notice across here we are neutral. There is no full positives, there is no full negatives. We are neutral. When the electrons moved up there to the oxygen and gave that a negative charge, well there must be a positive charge somewhere as well to balance that out. So the positive charge on the oxygen there, make sure you remember that. And again, show your lone pairs up here. You need to show the lone pairs for movement of electrons on this. Right, so we're there. This isn't the end of it. Because what's going to happen is this oxygen, it doesn't want to stay there like that. Now before, you might be thinking on this, why didn't the hydrogen leave before? So I'll show you the mechanism, we'll discuss why. So these electrons are going to come round and they are going to reform that double bond. Now again, calm can only have four bonds, so something needs to break. The chlorine decides, fine, I'll leave, I'll take the electrons in this bond, I'll leave as chloride. Now this oxygen still isn't happy there, effectively it's got a positive charge, doesn't want that. It boots the electron off. So, both the electrons in that bond, one from the oxygen, one from the hydrogen. Oxygen takes them both, kicks hydrogen off as H+. So what we end up with is this. So you might be thinking before the nucleophilic addition, why didn't sort of the hydrogen leave? Well hydrogen's not really a good leaving group. The bond between carbon and hydrogen, it's nice and strong. Think of them as friends, they don't like splitting up. Chlorine, there's a big electronegativity difference between the carbon and the chlorine that can snap off quite easily. It prefers to just take the electrons, it's not too bothered. Um, obviously we are going to get a, a nice HCl fumes down here. So it's one of the problems with using acid chlorides in industry. They tend not to do it. The initial material itself is quite corrosive. It's more corrosive than the anhydrides. So that's your first problem. Second problem, we're going to get some HCl fumes. So we don't want those because obviously nobody likes breathing in acid. So a problem with that. So the mechanism for this, addition elimination, because you can see... We are adding this on first, that's where the addition comes from. And then elimination, we are basically just taking off the Cl- minus and the H+, plus there, and they come and make friends down here. So addition, elimination. So 
So you must remember that full name. Don't just write addition. Don't just write elimination. It's an addition elimination mechanism for this. Reaction occurs exactly the same if you are, say, attacking with NH3. Again, just stick on. The nitrogen would have a positive sign across here. A hydrogen would leave from it. Again, same thing. Ditto. If you've got, say, primary amine, so forth like that. Mechanism exactly the same. That would attack the carbon here. You would end up stuck on there with a positive charge on the nitrogen. And a hydrogen would snap off just the same. So, straightforward. Now the anhydrides. So I've put an unsymmetrical one there, we'll just name it first. So you'll notice around this area we've got carbons on each side. All you do for naming it, effectively, just look at how many carbons there. So we've got an ethanoic here, we've got a propanoic there, and all you do is you just put them in alphabetical order. So the names can be quite long with these. So just E before P, nothing to do with chain length, so you don't have shortest before longest all the time, it's just pure alphabetical. So the reason why is effectively they are derivatives of the carboxylic acid, so that's why you've still got the OX in there. Now we are going to attack this in exactly the same way, so I'll even use the same chemical just to show you. So again, sticking with methanol here, now I can attack either of these. So when you do this reaction, you will probably get a mix of both the products. And there might be differences in terms of percentage-wise if this group is particularly big and crowding an area, but you'll not be expected to deduce things like that. You'll probably just be told what product to make, or they will usually give you a symmetrical one. So I'll do up here just so it's less crowded for me. So again, same as before, more electronegative, pulling the electrons away from that. So what's going to happen? Start at your lone pair, attack the carbon. Carbon can only have four bonds, bond will therefore break. Right, so we're now at this stage. So same as before, this double bond wants to reform, so something's got to break. So that will come back down and reform the double bond in there. And what will happen is this will snap off. So a leaving group, you can just imagine that leaving, just like you saw with the, the chlorine when it left as chloride. Across here as well. H plus gets booted off just the same. So what we will finish up with is that so effectively we formed a carboxylic acid there because the O- minus from that would just grab onto the H+, plus, which is kicked off as well. Um, now in terms of how good something is at attacking, you're looking effectively at how good 
it is in terms of things like bass, steric effects, things like that. You're effectively looking at how well the electrons can attack that area with it. Um, now the AQA book has got it sort of going ammonia, primary amine and so forth. Now those two I'm a bit iffy about the order what they place them um, because if you look at sort of the amine topic when you're looking at PKB things like that it's a bit iffy in my opinion the order they've actually got them but still have a, it'll probably not ask you to fully explain that it just wants the actual mechanism in 99% of the exams and um, so again remember the differences sort of the anhydrides there and the acid chlorides anhydrides preferred in industry because not as corrosive and you don't get the HCl fumes so that is it for the acylation so acylation and it's the addition elimination mechanism there. Carbonyl's done. Thank you.